Now, the ear is not just responsible for hearing. There we have balance and the part, the section of the ear, it's also in the inner ear, um, that has to do with, with balance are the three semicircular canals and you can see that they have or they lie at 90 degree angles from one another and they contain the sensory receptor organs. There you see at the basis of each and every of those canals you have a widening there, the ampulla and within the ampulla you get the cupula. I'll just show you or we're going to show you the next slide we will show you but there's the ampulla within the ampulla and then we have these two sac like structures the top one the utricular utricle um, and then the saccule at the um, basis of that and okay Lorraine balance is something where your remember your cerebellum is responsible for your balance and uh, sorry, it seems that we forgot to translate those two things. But anyway, what's important here yeah, is that there are two aspects to balance. It is your posi the position of your head with mm -hmm. relation to the ground. In other words, are you lying flat or are you mm -hmm. upright? And then the movement of your head. Those are the two types of stimuli that causes the impulse that will, you can pick up as balance. Remember, hearing is interpreted by your cerebrum. Balance by the cerebellum is, c is controlling um, balance. Yes, and that is what happens inside the semicircular canal. And this has got to do with the movement of the head. Mm. So, for instance, if you look at the cupula inside, if you move or turn your head to the right, the endolymph in this canal will turn to the left, the opposite direction. And it bends the cupula over, and this is a bit I know. If it's a bit too difficult for you to understand mm. now, now don't don't panic about it. Simply look at my head. Now. Yeah, you, you, I'm moving like this, and I'm moving like that. The fluid, the liquid yes. inside the ampulla, are flowing and flowing and flowing, and as it flows, the cupula is stimulated. Yeah. So, and that, that the cupola is then bending over to that side, which means the sensory hair cells at the base of this, they get the, the information and then it is sent with a vestibular um, nerve towards the cerebellum. Yeah, there you can see. It's actually a beautiful picture, you it know. It is, eh? There you can see how the movement of the endolymph will move the cupola and that is, it's a physical, it's a moving stimulus mm -hmm. that is then changed into an impulse interpreted mm -hmm. as or a part of the balance. Right. There in the utricle and the saculus, you've also got the uh, um, otholiths and the otholithic membrane. It's a macula. Once again, it's, it's all these difficult terms. I mean, imagine just mm. listening to in the utric utricle and the sacral, they get the, the, the um, macula, and in the macula, you get these autoliths. And as a, as a section A type of question, mm. they ask you this, this um, little crystals of calcium carbonate. Mm. Um, what are they called? And Actually, remember, quite valuable. Yes. You've got little marble crystals inside yeah. you. <laughs> Microscopically small, though. <laughs> right. But so as they roll around as you move. Mm. And just for interest sake, to make, give you sense, sometimes you turn around and you turn around. And when you come to a standstill, you're still dizzy. And that's simply because these little crystals are still moving mm -hmm. and then they have to settle. And that movement is interpreted as balance. It's that movement that tells the part of your brain responsible for balance, your cerebellum and also the message to your cerebrum so that you're aware of it, where your head is in relationship to the ground. I mean, you can, you can just plan and simply ask yourself the question, why is it that I tilt my head to the left? Why is it because of gravity? Yeah. It doesn't fall down to the ground. Mm. And that is because the message that is sent in your macula, that is why um, other senses and messages are sent to your muscles within your body and this is the next slide is mm. so important to show you that our ear does not work in isolation and this could be a question it is it doesn't work in isolation so if you can just mm. have the slide so that they can see because the messages must be sent to your muscles and your joints so your proprioceptors they receive this message so they must tell the muscles 
okay, you must constrict this much or that much to keep the body in balance. If you stand in the shower and you can't see, you feel you're off balance. Mm. So your eyes, which is the visual system, that also plays a very important and pivotal part. Mm. And then, of course, as we have shown you, the labyrinth, the vestibular system that we have just looked at, that is also within your ear. So all of mm. these, they work together to give your body and to keep mm. the balance. Yeah, that proprioceptive system that you've talked about, mm. the muscles and the joints, you've got all of these nerves all over mm -hmm. your body in the muscles and the joints. And they tell your body um, what your position is, what enables us to sit upright. We're not even aware that in all over through your body, in muscles and joints, there are mm -hmm. little nerve cells that tells your brain and the part responsible for balance that this muscle is contracting, that one is now... Uh, um, doing that, yes. And quite often when you get an injury, for instance, you hurt your ankle, those nerves are also damaged and you have to teach them to walk properly again. That's part of your treatment and your rehabilitation then. Yeah, this was quite a mouthful for them, mm, I suppose. But mm. I think the, the whole idea is go back, go to your diagrams first, make yourself um, know all the parts, know the names, so that they are not that foreign to you, and then maybe you'll understand mm. a bit better.